I will be showing you how to go from this to this. I will be comparing and benchmarking each major setting for graphics and performance differences so you can better optimize the simulator for your preferences. And I will be giving you my optimized settings as well. But first, I would like to thank Xbox for giving me the code to make this video possible. Now let's start with the anti-aliasing and upscaling. Native TAA is mostly stable, but detail is vaguely preserved. FSR2 quality has more detail, but suffers from noticeable shimmering. DLSS quality has slightly more shimmering than TAA, but image detail is most preserved here. In this scene, TAA and FSR2 quality have clearly visible artifacting issues, while on DLSS quality, it's very hard to spot. DLSS is clearly the winner in this title. The terrain level of detail has the most impact to the game's base image quality and performance. Each value gradually improves image quality but at a significant performance impact. The maximum value, which is 400, halves performance, and only at a value of 100 and above do most buildings and roads start looking pleasing to the eye. But going from a value of 50 to 100 has a 10% impact to FPS. Therefore, my recommendation for the best balance is to use a value of 50 and only increase it to 100 if you have spare performance. The off-screen terrain pre-caching setting is supposed to control how much of the terrain outside your current field of view is loaded and stored in memory, which helps load things faster when switching views. However, while there was a loading improvement on higher options, I didn't notice any difference in memory or VRAM usage. Maybe a restart is required to properly show a difference here. But what was impacted was the FPS, which was slightly lower on the higher options, even when static. I recommend to pick the highest option that your system can handle. So, if you have 32GB of RAM or higher, use Ultra. Otherwise, try lowering this setting. The displacement mapping setting is toggleable to on or off, and it's really not worth its performance impact. Turn it off for an 11% increase in FPS. The building setting gradually improves their quality with each option, and High and Ultra further increases their level of detail at a distance. This setting can have a large performance impact. Use medium for the best balance. The tree setting on low looks to use 2D tree billboards right in front of you, while medium replaces them for more modern looking trees. High enables tree and foliage shadows, which have a massive improvement to image quality, but comes with a very noticeable impact to FPS, and Ultra further increases tree quality and density. I recommend to use medium for the best performance. The plant setting gradually increases the amount of plants and their view distance. I couldn't find a location with more dense plants in view, so if this scene with a few plants can have a noticeable impact to performance on high and above, then just imagine what more dense areas can do. Use medium for the best balance. The rock setting is also pretty much the same as the plant setting, gradually increasing rock quality and view distance. Use medium for the best balance. The grass setting is the same here, 
gradually increasing grass density and view distance. But this setting can have a much larger impact to performance. Medium looks to be the best balance here as well. The object's level of detail setting is self-explanatory and has a smaller performance impact than I expected. But it depends on the location I guess. A value of 100 seems to be the best balance, with high quality objects near the camera and no perceptible difference on objects at a distance. The volumetric cloud setting on low looks too low quality with no definition. Medium is a small improvement, but there's still no detail in the clouds, while high and ultra look much higher quality. Considering the player spends most of their time in the sky, I recommend the high option, even though medium can look like the more balanced option on paper. The texture quality setting is the only one that requires a restart in order to take effect, which is why I was limited in testing it. I noticed gradually higher texture quality with each option on this pilot chair with the fur covering. As for VRAM, it noticeably increases on Ultra, but it stays under 8GB at 1440p with reasonable settings. Anisotropic filtering looks best at 16x and there is a negligible performance impact. The texture super sampling setting is supposed to adjust the quality of things such as floor markings as it states in the settings description. I saw a difference when testing the setting, but when I actually recorded it for some reason the difference wasn't visible and I remember the 4x4 option being the best balance, so I recommend that. The water wave setting on low has no waves. Medium applies a lower resolution wave effect to it, and high increases its resolution. High can have a large performance impact, so use medium. The ray traced shadow setting is the most useless implementation of a ray tracing setting I have seen so far. It's a disgrace to even call it ray traced. Just turn it off for a bit better performance. The shadow map setting on the 768 and 1024 values looks similar and a bit soft overall. While the quality increases with higher values, the performance impact is not worth it in my opinion. Use 1024 for the best balance. Increasing the terrain shadow setting gradually increases the quality and length of set shadows. A value of 512 offers the best balance here. Enabling contact shadows has a large impact to image quality as expected, but increasing their quality beyond medium doesn't have a perceptible difference to image quality. Performance seems to be largely the same across all options in this scene. However, performance may potentially differ in other areas. Therefore, I recommend medium.
The windshield effect setting is currently broken as changing the setting keeps reverting it back to medium. It only has two options to choose from, medium and high. And from what I could tell, from the outside looking at the windshield, rain effects are rendering. But from inside the cockpit, they are not, which may change with the high option. But as of now, I cannot suggest any option definitively. For ambient occlusion, going from off to low adds subtle occlusion and medium and high further increase its intensity while ultra looks pretty much the same as high this applies to outdoor scenes the same way i recommend high for the best balance The cube map reflections are minimally utilized in this simulator, and there isn't a glaring quality difference either. Use a value of 192 for the best balance. Remarched reflections gradually increase reflections quality and can have a big impact to image quality with the ultra setting. Thankfully, ultra has a small impact to performance, which is why it's my recommendation. For light shafts, the settings description states it controls their quality, but from my testing, they seem to look the exact same on all options when turned on, which is not what is supposed to happen. Therefore, it may possibly be bugged, but there is a noticeable performance impact on Ultra, which is weird. For now, use low. From my testing, the depth of field effect is only used in cutscenes and the quality difference is very small across the options. I recommend high for the best balance. Motion blur does as you would expect, but I honestly couldn't tell the difference between the options other than on low of course. As for performance, there is a small impact up to high, while ultra costs slightly more. Use high if you intend to use motion blur. The glass cockpit refresh rate setting is self-explanatory, and it only affects specific aircrafts. On low, it's obviously laggy and ruins the experience. On medium, it's much better, but it still looks like it runs at a low frame rate. On high, it runs smoothly. As for performance, even when static, there is a noticeable impact with each option. Use medium for the best balance. I wasn't able to test the character's quality setting on the account that there are zero NPCs, other than the pilot and the co-pilot of the player's aircraft, which don't seem to be affected by this setting as far as I could tell. Just use medium to be on the safe side for now. The traffic airport quality setting gradually increases traffic in airports. This includes logistics and airplanes in which airplanes only start appearing on high and ultra, which leads to lower performance. Therefore, I recommend medium. air traffic, in this scene, I could only notice one aircraft at a time on medium and high, and three at a time on ultra, and even when there aren't any aircrafts in view, this setting on low and above noticeably decreases performance, which is why I recommend you disable this setting entirely, and only increase it 
if you have spear performance. The road traffic setting controls the density of road traffic and thankfully it doesn't seem to have a noticeable performance impact even on ultra which is my recommended option. For sea traffic, adjusting the setting completely disables traffic in the scene until a very long reload, which is why I could only compare the off and ultra options. There is a noticeable performance impact on ultra. I recommend medium to be on the safe side. For fauna, adjusting this setting completely disables them in the scene until a long reload as well. There seems to be a large performance impact on ultra, even though there aren't many animals on screen. I recommend medium to be on the safe side. The game on maximum settings at native 1440p is without a doubt very demanding. Frame rates are very low. VRAM usage is through the roof, maxing out the 12GB VRAM on the GPU, and memory consumption is noticeably larger than on the optimized settings, but that is probably because of some VRAM spillage, and there are lots of stuttering and freezes, definitely not a good experience. The optimized settings still at native 1440p offer a vastly improved experience with a mostly minimal drop in image quality, except for the terrain level of detail. VRAM usage has basically decreased by almost half, which is a very rare thing to see, especially since the texture quality setting is still on ultra. This game really loves to hog VRAM and memory on higher settings. Frame rates are averaging over 30 FPS, which is an increase of over two times, but the 1% lows are still dropping below 30 FPS. Using DLSS quality further improves frame rates and 1% lows. However, there seems to be some type of slight CPU bottleneck at these frame rates, or just general hardware underutilization. In fact, at max settings, averaging 15 FPS, the game is way more CPU intensive than at the optimized settings which were averaging 45 FPS, which is just crazy to see. But thankfully, this game is very scalable. While it's not the most optimized title, it definitely runs better than the original Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020.